Welcome! It's a great day to be a miner because we're gonna get rich, baby! We're gonna open this thing up, we're gonna talk about it, but first, let's spin that intro. Yeah, and we're back, and today we're going to get rich with this little device, and I'm sure you already know what it is because you read the title, but without further ado, let's open it up, see what's in the box. Oh, in you the box? know what time it is. RGB knife. Engage. All right, so first and foremost, what is this? Where did we get this? This is the Bitaxe 400 Supra. Let's open it up and see exactly what this thing looks like. We'll talk about, we'll get the setup, basic setup. We'll go over the specs, the features, and then uh, we'll tell you about probability and of course, whether or not you should buy one. So there it is, first and foremost, nice and packaged. Packaged very well. And right off the top, we've got a nice little pamphlet from Decentral. This came from Decentral, of course. I'll put links down in the description for this guy. And quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. I paid for this with my own hard-earned crypto and I got it from the Decentral website. So any of the opinions held in this video are that of my own. Okay, that being said, let's go with over everything it comes with and talk about it. And uh, yeah, first and foremost, it's from Decentral. Links will be down in the description. This is the operating manual by Decentral Technologies. Let's get started. Um, the overview, unboxing, installing drivers, flashing, blah, blah, blah. A whole bunch of stuff that you probably don't need unless you run into an issue. So we'll set that aside. Thank you for your purchase and a QR code to scan to go and leave your opinion. Then this is interesting. What is this little guy? The performance of Bidax products, including Bidax Ultra and Bidax Supra, is influenced by the inherent veritability of semiconductor materials, um, which basically is saying silicon lottery, because different chips are performed differently even when cut from the same wafer. We all know that. Um, operational guidelines, it tells you where they're designed to run for voltage, the power supply that you should be using, the temperature limits that you should be using. It also gives you a warning about risks of overclocking and some general advice. Uh, advice. Let's read that. It is recommended to operate the devices within the prescribed guidelines to maximize both performance and lifespan. Users should consider their ambient environment conditions, ensure adequate cooling, and regularly check the device's operational parameters. What it's telling you is, if you're not running this thing stock and you're pushing the clocks up higher, make sure that your temperature is well controlled, that you're not overheating the thing because there is a delicate balance when you're overclocking you might be getting more hash rate, better chance at hitting blocks, but at the same point, you're also putting more strain on the device itself and you can shorten the lifespan. So there you go. There's your warning. Thank you, Decentral. All right, so what else is in here? Nice little logo from Decentral. It's a holographic. I might actually add this to the wall. We'll see. I haven't actually added any vendors to the wall. These are all only fellow YouTube content creators. So we'll consider doing something with our uh, vendors later. This bit X sticker though is pretty sweet. Um, we just got a couple stickers. We got a Yoda. So uh, they've sent me the Yoda before, but this one's actually holographic. So that's really nice. We got a fallout, um, guy with the Bitcoin in his hand. These are, these are some pretty decent ones. We got Popeye with a Bitcoin spinach, not too shabby. Again, this is sent to me as an end user. They don't know that I am the content creator. They don't know that I uh, am making any content on this. So this is basically how you should receive this as well. So Pleb Miner, um, what is this guy? <laughs> nice little 3D print put in here. And uh, both the items that I've purchased, both the different Bidax variants have, the Nerdax and the Bidax variants, have came with some kind of a 3D print that was pretty quality. This looks like a I'm not real sure if this is supposed to be like a Sith with a Bitcoin necklace, but he's really pretty cool. All right, so now to the actual what we purchased in here. This would be the Bidax. This will be our power supply. We don't need the box or any of that. Yeah, 
whatever. Okay, so we'll just open up our power supply real quick. Power supply for this one is the single plug. I prefer the two piece um, with the brick in the middle because you get a lot of extra cord length and uh, and you don't have the big block to plug in. You just have the small skinny plug, which gives you more room on your power strips or, or your PDUs or whatever you're using. Um, this one is just a kind of a standard power block, but it's, it's actually got the detachable interchangeable plate for um, different locations. So this is the US American type plug um, and you push the plug in and then this is so you could actually put like a European connector on here and that's pro they probably make it that way so it's more universal uh, when you select your plug. And then it uses just a power, uh, a barrel jack and it looks like a 5.5 uh, by 2.5 millimeter. And I believe this is a 20 watt it is a 5 volt, 20 watt power supply. That's what's going to be running this one. Now let's open this guy up. Very well packaged. Very well packaged. So first and foremost, comes with a very nice uh, custom bit axe stand. I believe this is actually Decentral's own design. Um, it is really sturdy, really well made, uh, very little lines in it. Like it is a very good 3D print, looks really good. And then of course the prize is our Bitax 400, um, 400 Supra uh, Bitax Miner. And there's not a lot to this guy. On the back it's really nice, it has the Pleb Miner Skull logo. Um, but basically let's, let's go over the features of this thing real quick. You've got your integrated little OLED screen and it's the same as, well, it's actually a little little, it's a little smaller than some of our other screens it looks like, but it's got a little OLED screen here hooked directly onto your board. And on your board, you have your um, 40 by 40 by 20 millimeter thick fan right on the front to keep it cool. And it is a PWM fan. That means it can step up the RPMs on it based on the heat of the chip underneath. It's got an aluminum gold heat sink underneath of the fan. And then underneath of that is your single ASIC chip. So there is the features. This is what it looks like here. There's our power supply. Now let's go over the specs on this guy. Specs, let's go over to full specs again. This is the Bitax Supra. It is the 1368 model. That means that it is running off of the BM1368 chip, and that is out of a Bitmain Antminer S21 model. Uh, stock, this thing can run up to 625 giga hash. Um, it can obviously be pushed up to way more than that, up to like 775 with some extreme overclocking. Um, let's talk about the cost on this thing. I What I paid, I paid 100, um, 174 total USD two door. Um, the base price was 159 when I ordered this with 15 shipping. But wait, but wait, as new models have came out, the price has actually sank on this thing. So current price, and that's probably what you more care about is $132 USD. Um, just as a note, they have the main currency listed as Canadian on there. F so I do a conversion and what I actually pay is 132 plus 15 shipping and that's to the East Coast United States. So this model as it sets today, if I were to order it again, would be $148 to door. That's with the base cooling and that's just with this single fan with the base uh, aluminum heat sink. They have three, four different cooling options available as well. They have an ice tower, they have an argon for a really extreme nice cooler. Um, and those will range you anywhere up to, up to an additional $32 USD cost. So if you wanna go for the extreme overclocking and you really want to crank this thing on the frequency um, and the voltage, you're gonna need a better cooler than just the stock. And of course, you're gonna to want to buy the additional cooler, which is gonna cost additional cost. But just putting it out there, those are some great options. And you get to pick different um, colors for your print. You don't just have to get this plain black one like I got, but that's what I picked. So you can get 
a, a myriad of different colors and some really cool options as well on your stand. So, so those are the specs and the features and the cost. And I think that about covers it. So let's just go ahead and do a really abbreviated setup. We're not going to go through the full setup and show you every screenshot on how to set it up. If you need that information, make sure to check out one of my previous videos. I have the Nerd Axe video ab above, and that goes through detailed step-by-step -step how to connect to this thing, how to get to the, uh, get this thing on the Wi-Fi network, how to update your pool, your miner, um, your port, all the fun things that you need your wallet address to put them all in and to get it up and mining. Additionally, we've also done the, a couple different BitAx uh, variants and from Bitcoin merch, make sure to check out that video. It goes over all the full setups as well in extreme detail. So if you need that, that video is up above. For now, we're just gonna do a quick physical setup. The physical setup, you literally plug this guy in, you plug in your power cord right here. They have a nice little slot cut out on this case. I actually prefer the minimalist stand to this one. This one's kind of got the wide sides on it. I've used the minimalist stand for the three that are behind me. Um, it's and I've 3D printed a couple of them myself, but bit uh, but they actually have sent me one as well. I prefer the minimalist that does not have the sides on there. It's just better for cooling. Um, looks wise, this is probably fancier looking, especially from the side because it's nice and thick and covers everything. It has the nice honeycomb on the back. So we're just gonna plug this thing in, plug it into the wall. We're gonna let it fire up. Once it fires up, it will tell us how to connect to this. We're gonna use a phone or a laptop or a tablet, some mobile device that connects to a Wi-Fi network. We're gonna connect to this Wi-Fi network, which will show up as bit acts and some set of numbers. We'll connect to it. When we connect to it, we'll open a browser, the GUI for the AxOS. Once we're in AxOS, we can then go and add our Wi-Fi network that we want this connect to, our SSID as it is, our password. Then we will update the pool that we're gonna mine to, whether it be CK pool, whether it be Lucky Monster. Um, I've used a different number of solo pools that I'm just letting them run on. Those are a couple of the key ones that I use. We'll update the port number. And then once we get, and of course we'll put in our wallet dot the miner name so we'll put um our btc wallet dot and then we'll probably just do bit axe 1368 because we're probably have five different versions now and we want to keep them separated and then we're going to go ahead and uh restart it in the software when it restarts it, it will then connect to our wi-fi address once it's connected to the wi-fi address then it should start hashing away as long as everything's punched in properly and then once it's hashing, you can go check it at the pool, the 192.168.1. whatever your router has assigned it, whether it be .4.1, .201, um, whatever your uh, router assigns it. And it usually will show it right on your little OLED, what the local IP it's assigned. And that's how you'll be able to connect to it. You'll be able to see it hashing away. You get back into AxOS. And uh, yeah, that is the entire mining setup. And uh, I think without further ado, let's time warp and go ahead and get it set up. Let's go. All right, so there we have it. We're already set up in mining. Again, I wanna reiterate a pro tip that I had posted in a previous video. Before you go in to start setting this thing up, you are best off to go ahead and get your BTC address, your pool, your port, copy it all to the clipboard of whatever device you're using, whether it be a phone, laptop, or a tablet. And then that way, when you connect from your phone or tablet or laptop to this guy, that you can still go retrieve it. If this is connected to here and you're in the AxOS, you might not have internet. You're not connected to the internet, you're connected to this guy, so you won't be able to go retrieve those items to paste into the AxOS. So that's your little pro tip. And uh, again, I forgot to do it this time. And so I had to disconnect from this guy, reconnect to my Wi-Fi, go get those items, copy to clipboard, reconnect to this guy, and then post paste all that information in. But yeah, I digress. Now, this thing is set up, it is mining. It's currently showing six, no, 708 giga hash, and it's showing a watt per terahash at 19, which is super impressive and actually better than my gamma 
is doing. But again, this is early on. You can't get a real accurate portrayal of what it's doing until you let it run for quite some time and then you get your an actual average. Now, how much power is this guy using? So this guy, it's showing that it's using 14 watts on the device itself, 14.3 is what it says, but it's actually using about 18 watts total at the wall. And of course you lose a little on your power supply and heat loss. So yeah, it is using a total of about 18 watts at the wall, which is pretty good since it's still hashing away at 705 uh, giga hash. That's pretty impressive. And now it says watt per terahash 20. So it's kind of neat how it puts the little on the display. It'll keep putting your averages. It'll tell you your fan RPMs. It'll tell you your power usage, your hash rate. It'll tell you your fan RPM. It'll tell you your temperature, which is at 64, which is a little hotter than I would think it needs to be running. But the fan RPM right now is at 4,600. So it's not really maxing out the fan. The fan will go way more high than that or way higher than that if need be. So yeah, it is up and running. Now let's talk about profitability and whether or not you should buy this thing. First and foremost, this is not financial advice, but if you do not have expendable income, these are not the type of devices for you because you have to pay for the device. And yeah, you can run it and run it and you're hardly using the electricity. You won't notice the electricity, but at the same point, this may never earn anything. If you're solo mining Bitcoin, you may never hit a block. So you can solo mine other coins on the SHA-256 algorithm conversely and have a higher chance of hitting a block, Bitcoin Cash, and there are a myriad of other SHA-256, but the lower coins earn lower with higher chances of hitting blocks, obviously are gonna earn less revenue. What would I recommend anybody buy this? If you want to get into Bitcoin mining, you want a solo miner that you just plug in, that's a cool conversation piece, you set it up, you let them mine, you let them go, and someday you might hit a block, you might not, but you won't feel the crunch of the electricity cost on these guys. You just let them run, let them run, and they'll never hurt, break the bank, they'll never hurt you because of the electricity cost. Will it over ever ROI? Will these small, probably not because me personally, I'm running them only on Bitcoin or Bitcoin cash and where the chances are pretty low of hitting blocks. And if they hit, they hit. And if I hit a Bitcoin block someday, man, I'll be like, yippee, yippee. It'll pay for all of that little mini devices that I've bought and all the electricity and tenfold. So there it is. There it is in a nutshell. This is a beautiful device. It's from Decentral. It's got comes with all these extra goodies at no extra cost. If What are your thoughts on this? What do you think about these bit axes or the Avalon Nano or the Nerd Axe or any of these additional miners that we've been going through lately, any of these solo miners? Are they a super cool piece of hardware? Are they a waste of your time? What do you think? Tell us down in the comments. We would love to hear, the people would love to hear. If you're new to mining and you need some help, make sure to join the Misfit Mining Discord. There's always plenty of seasoned vets willing to help you out. And if you like the video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks for coming along and enjoy the ride.